this video will explore the cult of grotesque we see among celebrity designs. Gala Dali was the wife and companion and muse of surrealist artist Salvador Dali. In 1932, with the Lindbergh child trial raging, she decided to wear a dress with a dead baby on it and caused quite a stir in various newspapers. The Dalis would go on to create more of a stir with their outfits. For example, Salvador Dali would wear a suit, suit jacket with glasses full of absinthe and straws where partygoers could take a sip from his jacket as the party went on. Dali would also cut his hand on shot glasses and drink the blood, pretending it was a kind of liquor, and then leave the shot glass for other people to try it, not knowing that it was full of his own blood. In 1936, Salvador Dali attended a party hosted by poet Dylan Thomas. Thomas served boiled string at this party. Salvador Dali was not to be outdone and he decided to wear a diving outfit. He then replicated this outfit at various parties throughout the 1930s and at one point insisted on having water filled into it and he nearly drowned. By 1934, Salvador Dali was corresponding with the Italian artist Elsa Schiaparelli and they started a relationship in part due to Schiaparelli's friendship with various surrealist artists and their wives. This jewelry collaboration is from 1937. Also in 1937, Schiaparelli and Dali um, worked together on a high-heeled shoe hat, and this idea came from a photograph taken in 1933 by Gala showing Dolly wearing a woman's shoe on his head and another one on his shoulder. The hat was captured for posterity in a photograph by Georges Sade, published in an October 1937 couture publication. Gala herself wore the hat as well in 1938. The hat belonged to Gala and entered the Palais Galleria Museum collection in 2013. There's also a hat with a red heel in the Andrea Pfister collection and another one with a black heel in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. The hat is made of felt. Dali was also interested in lobsters and he was very interested in their sexual organs and the fact that they were an aphrodisiac. He correlated with Schiaparelli on the 1937 lobster dress. He painted the large lobster on the front. The dress is an A-line off-white silk evening dress with a crimson waistband featuring a large lobster painted by Salvador Dali onto the skirt. The initial lobster motif was drawn by Dali and printed onto the dress by the silk designer Sachet. The dress was also illustrated with sprigs of parsley and the dress is made from printed silk organza and synthetic horse hair. It was common for Schiaparelli to use hair, including human hair in her dresses. One of her dresses from the 1930s includes a blonde mane of hair. The dress was worn by Wallace Simpson in photographs taken by Cecil Beaton shortly before Simpson's marriage to Edward VIII. Beaton's photographs of Simpson were featured in a Vogue magazine eight-page spread in June 1937. It was also illustrated in Women's Wear Daily. However, it wasn't well received by the public and People argued that the dress was charged with erotic flippancy and gave the British public even more reason to hate Wallace in the aftermath of her husband's abdication as British monarch. The skeleton dress designed by Schiaparelli was really intended to highlight Schiaparelli's um, ability to show the human form. And so this dress was a very popular one and it's actually been replicated including by Lebanese designers into the 2020s. 
We then see the the 1938 work, which was inspired by three surrealist women holding in their arms the skins of an orchestra, which was a Dali painting from 1936. Dali designed the screens for the silk screening of the dresses patterned material by Schiaparelli. And probably one of the more disturbing aspects of this outfit are the gl opera gloves intended to look like skin. Schiaparelli was considered an artist more than a designer by her peers. She preferred insects and she designed jewelry which looked like insects crawling on the women who wore them. Coco Chanel was not a fan of Schiaparelli even though they were contemporaries. Chanel referred to Schiaparelli as the artist who happens to design dresses. Despite this, Schiaparelli had a very uh, prolific career and her fashion house is still in existence today. She didn't have the happiest life. One of her children had polio and her first husband was a fraudster who encouraged Schiaparelli to help him in his fraudulent schemes. Schiaparelli would come into contact with many different groups of people from refugees to surrealist artists and their wives and this inspired all of her work. The Schiaparelli House in 2023 hosted a haute couture event, and at this event, the singer Doji Cat was decked in 30,000 red Swarovski crystals. These crystals were applied by hand. It took over four hours for all of the crystals to be applied, and I think celebrities like things like this because they get to post the application on their various social media, they get more views. We all know that celebrities being shocking is good for their market value and good for their presence in the media. Despite this, the shade of red used by Schiaparelli in the design, um, red 40 and red 39, have been linked to cancer cases in the United States. So it's a really interesting shade for Schiaparelli to choose to use. We're going to see a lot of red in these celebrity outfits, and I think that that's partly because they're, it's shocking, it's attention grabbing, and we have the biblical reference from Revelations chapter 12, where John writes, another sign appeared in heaven, a huge red dragon with seven heads, 10 horns, and seven royal crowns on his heads. This red dragon was supposed to be Satan. Not everybody depicted Satan as red. In Germanic texts, he's depicted as black and Chaucer depicted him as green. Regardless, we do see a lot of red sort of satanic imagery from these celebrities. The next piece I'll focus on is the meat dress of Lady Gaga. This dress was made of raw beef and worn by her at the 2010 MTV Video Music Awards. It was designed by Frank Fernandez and the dress came from, the dress used meat from Fernandez's own family's butchery. Gaga wore the meat dress to accept her video of the year trophy for Bad Romance and the dress was made of flank steak. The dress required Gaga to be stitched onto the outfit backstage and Gaga herself said the dress smelled good because it smelled like meat. After being worn, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame paid $6,000 to taxidermist Sergio Vigilato to preserve the dress. It had been frozen following the two television appearances and it had been decomposing. It was treated with bleach, formaldehyde, and detergent to kill any bacteria and was reconditioned by being dark, dyed dark red once it was preserved. However, after the preservation, there were several pieces of beef left over and gradually the meat dress turned into jerky. Turning to Madonna. Um, this year, Madonna was featured in Vanity Fair's Icons issues in France and Italy, and Madonna was depicted as Jesus. If you search for these pictures online, they are titled Madonna as Jesus Christ. 
She's depicted at the Last Supper, and she's also depicted with a crucifix between her legs. Madonna's relationship with the Catholic Church is pretty well known. Um, she is a lapsed Catholic. She says that she has been banned from the Catholic Church. I don't know if that's true. I know in the 1990s there was discussion of doing that because Madonna did get an abortion. Madonna's relationship with the Catholic Church makes her really angry. When she writes about it, she insists that she's a force for good and she unites artists, not that she's this force for bad, despite the fact that she's pretty open about getting abortions and doesn't acknowledge any of the mental or emotional fallout that often occurs in young women after receiving abortions. There's also a lot of footage of Madonna and her horns. Um, she does hire Minotaur-like figures for her many performances, and there are many photos of her wearing various forms of horns. This isn't uncommon. Many celebrities dive into wearing horns. Katy Perry, for example, um, grew up in a conservative Christian household but distanced herself from that once in Hollywood. She actually was in a legal dispute over land owned by a nunnery, and um, it's a shame that she decided to be so harsh in her dealings with um, this group of people that she had grown up with. We see Britney Spears engaging in the devil horns. Um, this is something where we see a lot of red in celebrity performances and again red is very eye-catching but it's also a color that's associated with satanic imagery the next piece that's sort of disturbing and part of the cult of grotesque is the july 2022 balenciaga and mercedes amg face shield I couldn't find how much these face shields go for. The only person I've ever seen wearing them is Kim Kardashian, but these face shields were worn in a couture show by Balenciaga in Paris, and it's engineered to optimize airflow, improve performance metrics, and ensure a stabilized carbon dioxide intake. Um, they're made of tinted polyurethane boasting anti-fog technology. I'm not sure if Mercedes implemented a smart screen with the shield to show various digital icons, um, but they are very strange and it's sort of odd that people would want to hide their faces since our faces are one of the most unique things about us. Turning back to 2021, we see Lil Nas X's Satan Shoes. And these were released in a batch of 666 shoes by Mischief X, who had released Jesus Shoes in 2019. These Satan Shoes featured a bronze pentagram, an inverted cross, and a drop of real human blood. They were made using Nike Air Max 97s, and Nike was not involved with creating the shoes at all. Nike did not design or release the shoes, and they were not endorsed by Nike. Lil Nas X kept the first pair of shoes, and they were priced at $1,000.18 a pair, a reference to the Bible passage Luke 10.18 that reads, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Each shoe's air bubble sole contained red ink and one drop of human blood. A Mischief spokesperson said the blood had been provided by members of the art collective located in New York City, adding, we love to sacrifice for our art. Later, the spokesman explained that the creative team collected individual drops over the course of a week, using the same type of needle used in at-home glucose and diabetic tests. The group also confirmed that Nike was not involved in any capacity. These shoes are really strange because blood can't be transported in the United States without certain permits in place. These permits are called biosafety -sa level or BSL permits. And there are dif different le levels of these permits. According to the CDC, 
Blood falls under BSL level two, and it's an agent associated with human disease. Routes of transmission of disease include percutaneous injury, ingestion, mucous membrane exposure. What the CDC officially recommends is limited access to blood, biohazard warning signs, sharps precautions, and a biosafety manual defining any needed waste decont decontamination or medical surveillance policies. When you're disposing of blood, there are certain policies in place, and none of these policies were followed by the Lil Nas X mischief collaboration. For example, the shoes were shipped using any shipping method. Um, they weren't shipped using physical containment devices or PPE. So I'm not sure how this celebrity was able to avoid complying with CDC requirements on blood. Every single group that interacts with blood, whether they're a university, whether they're a nonprofit, they have to have practices and equipment specific to the operations performed and the laboratory function or activity. So, you know, you'd think that the FDA or the CDC would speak out about these shoes because there was blood being sent through the mail, being worn by people, going to the gym, going to crowded areas. There's no indication that this blood was screened for diseases before being inserted into clothing. Despite this, there were no bureaucrats that spoke out about it. Unlike the thalidomide scandal where FDA Catholics spoke out about the damages being done to American fetuses, nobody spoke out about this. And what actually came to the rescue were Nike trademark infringement attorneys. So Nike sued Mischief X for infringing on their trademarks around this shoe. Mischief X had admitted that they had used Nike's shoes as a base and when they were sued, they argued that Nike didn't understand sneaker culture and Nike had been permitting their sneakers to be used as bases for different fashion for years and they should just let it go. Nike didn't let it go and the shoes were recalled due to a settlement agreement. Um, you can still buy these shoes on eBay, I believe. I believe they're around three grand. But um, what came to the rescue for this biohazard was a group of trademark attorneys, not any of the many federal agencies that are dedicated to tracking this kind of use. So that was that's very strange. And then the next piece is the kind of artwork that these celebrities have in their homes. Recently, actress Jamie Lee Curtis shared a photo, and in the photo was artwork by photographer Betsy Schneider. Schneider had photographed a naked child in a tub, and the photograph is called The Tub. Um, if you go to Betsy Schneider's works and the works of other artists who collaborate with her in their various galleries, a lot of the photos are password protected, which is really strange. I don't know what the password is to see some of these photos. I don't know if the photos are questionable morally or legally, and that's why they're protected by passwords on the internet, but very, very strange. And then in 2021, we saw 2,400 people needing medical treatment following the Astroworld Festival tragedy. Astroworld was a music festival hosted by rapper um, and Kylie Jenner's husband? I don't know their relationship. Travis Scott. And 732 people sought extensive treatment for their injuries. When Travis Scott opened this sort of weird portal looking thing, a lot of people lunged forward and there were 50,000 attendees who started pushing towards the stage. Um, the youngest victim was nine-year-old Ezra Blount and he died from compression asphyxia. Indeed, all of the victims ranged in age from 14 to 27 died from compression asphyxia. Hundreds of lawsuits were filed against Scott and the concert's organizer, Live Nation, accusing them of negligence. Um, 
this was a really strange stage setup. You opened through the mouth of this figure and then you walk towards the stage which had fire coming out of it and there was a portal which had a message saying you know we're gonna meet you on the other side or see you on the other side which is commonly used for death so I don't know why there was so much death symbolism in this Houston area festival in 2021 um, to my knowledge, some of the lawsuits have been settled, but some have not. The fact that so many people died and so many people were injured is just really strange. It almost seems like the concert venue wanted to wanted people to rush forward and didn't have accurate safety precautions in place. Um, the cult of celebrity art is designed in part to shock us, I think, but it would frankly be more shocking if there were artists who made fun of different religions or who used different religions imagery. We're always seeing the imagery being used as satanic or anti-Christian. And it would be more shocking if someone did, you know, anti-Islamic or anti-Sikh or anti-Buddhist or anti-Hindu or anti-Judaist imagery. Um, that would probably have more shock value today. I also don't know why it's such a common theme. You'd think that some of these celebrities who pride themselves on being so unique would do something different. But I've come to expect a lot of satanic imagery from celebrities today.